Get up, get ready, because we have another at-home edition of World of Fortnite for you. I'm your host, Sarah Pookie Facelin, and we have a great show for you today. The rotation is looking at endgame heroes and save the world. Point Adventures takes a look at the latest issues of the Batman Zero Point crossover comic series. And of course, we have everything the community is passing around in low ground. It looks like the latest Fortnite crossover features the world of the Mistborn series. The Kelsier skin was added to the game just last week and may signal more fantasy-driven crossovers in the future. The Kelsier bundle also comes with a hemallergic spikes back bling, the volcanic glass daggers pickaxe, and a new loading screen. All right, next up in the rotation, we've got the top five endgame heroes in Save the World. <laughs> Fortnite Save the World has a variety of heroes at your disposal, each with their own unique perks. But not all of them are viable in the most difficult missions in the game, as some abilities and perks don't scale up so well with increasing mission difficulty. Today, we'll be taking you through the top 5 endgame heroes in Save the World. At number 5, we have Archaeologists. Jess is a farming focused hero that doesn't really do a lot of damage. Jess is infamous for being a popular pick among AFKers and farmers who don't contribute towards the objective. When used correctly, however, she is the best hero in the game for acquiring resources. The way to use her is simple. Just smash everything in sight with your heavy pickaxe attack and she will gather all kinds of resources automatically. In late twine, you will be using a ton of resources for building tier 3 forts, crafting traps and weapons, and constantly running out of ammo. Expeditions don't don't do much to help with this aside from the rare Warcraft expedition and the only way to really cope with the high resource costs is to use Jess to farm for material. Number 4 on our list is Tactical Assault Sledgehammer. Assault rifles are the meta late game, as they allow you to deal a lot of damage without getting close to the enemy. There is no ideal build for this hero, and you can pick the perks that best suit your favorite assault rifle. Guns like the Storm King's Wraith are great for single target DPS to take out the mist monsters from a distance without risking your health. Some support slots are common for all builds, such as Mad Tidings, and some players also prefer to go the Subwoofer route. Sledgehammer is exactly what you'd expect from an assault rifle focused hero. Your guns do a lot of extra damage. At number three, we have Anti-Cuddle Sarah, a melee ninja. Sarah is the best crowd control hero in the game and she scales pretty well with enemy levels. Melee ninjas have always struggled with the fact that you need to be close to the enemy to deal damage and Sarah takes care of that as well. Her signature weapon is an ear splitter and you're looking for the heavy attack that makes enemies around you break into a dance while also dealing shockwave like damage to them. Sarah's loadout also has pointy fury's heavy axe efficiency that lets you spam this move as much as you want. Moreover, Sarah's perk allows her to gain energy and health for each enemy you kill. This makes for the ultimate combination for melting hordes of enemies. While mist monsters and mini bosses cannot dance, all other husks, even riot huskies, can be eliminated with the ear splitter. At number two, we have Sub Zero Zenith. Unfortunately, petty builds don't do well in 160 plus missions, and Zenith is the only Outlander worth using in those missions. Even with the reduced cooldowns, Outlander abilities just aren't good enough. Instead of relying on Outlander abilities, Sub-Zero Zenith brings an interesting perk that freezes enemies when you get crits on them with a sniper. Zenith's freeze also applies water affliction onto the frozen enemy, dealing damage over time. If you use him with a crank shot, you can basically freeze any mist monster, even a charging smasher, at will. Mist monsters are the most difficult part of high level missions and being able to freeze them is an invaluable addition to any team, especially with the trap nerf that won't let you push smashers away with your wall launchers. The number one spot is shared by Base Kyle and Power Base Nox. The former's extra building health is an invaluable perk and the latter's self-healing builds helps you with your jail builds. With defense missions, constructors are a must-have in high level twine and you'll likely lose the match if you don't have one on your team. You can always have one in the commander slot and the other in the support slot, but the result will more or less be the same. The only exception is fight category four storms where you can use Mega Base Kyle for extra base range. But Base Kyle Kyle is superior for most objectives and his base range is pretty sufficient even for category 2 storms. Here's the ideal loadout for base Kyle. Note that fully contained damaged enemies that strike your walls, so if you're doing a jail build, replace that with Ice King's Snare. Hello! 
and welcome to another edition of Playing with Pooks. I'm your host, as always, PookieFace underscore. And uh, what I thought we would do this week is check out another one of the LTMs. There's just been so many good ones lately that I don't want to pass up the chance to try these out and show you guys what's up. Ooh, stealthy Stronghold, round one, let's go. Meow meow. Oh, wow. Oh, goodness. This is not what I was expecting. Okay, so we have a loadout already. Hello? Teammates? Um, help me, teammates. My teammates have decided that they did not want to push up with me, so... Oh, gosh. Really? This bamboo? I'm being bamboozled by bamboo! Are you serious? This is exciting. Well, it would appear that we lost perhaps one or two of our teammates. It's interesting that they mark for you. Alright, this guy tried to take height. Guess I'll go with him. Oh boy. You know what? I'm just gonna do this again. And get ultimate height. Someone's going to drop. Oh, what? Oh, my. Help me, team. Uh oh. Uh oh, we're out of mats. Ooh, we've got a hunting rifle. That's interesting. Okay, these people, they're they are ready now. Let me in! Wait, traps? Oh my, why is this not editing for me? Fish, did we win? Oh my gosh, I think we won. <gasps> oh my gosh, we did it! Real clean sniper time. Let me see your face. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. Oh god, oh god. Ooh, it takes my 25, man. I was not ready for that. Did it. We got someone. Come on, buddy. Bye. Oh, shoot. I don't have any mats. My guy. Yes! <laughs> Let's go! Yo! That was sick! Alrighty. Tied for the lead! Alright, we can do this. No max left, that's awkward. All right. No, no! <laughs> I'm like sweating right now. Slurpee Swamp, one of my favorites. I wonder if Slurp Barrels work. Guys, we have literally one of my favorite weapons of all time, the grenade launcher. Now, I don't know if you know this, but apart from being the real Canadian sniper, I am also the explosives specialist. This is my round though. Did 
I just win for my team? I told you! Pookie face underscore! Explosive specialist! <laughs> Let's go! Oh my gosh. You know what? Honestly, that game mode, big fan. I really do like that. You hop in, got a random loadout, very small circle, first team to three wins. That right there is what I like to call a very well thought out LTM. Some of them, you know, in the past, it's just been bland. They've been boring. This one, definitely check it out. 100%. It is fantastic. It's great. I'm going to hop offline um, and uh, probably continue to play this for the rest of the evening because it's 10 out of 10. Would definitely recommend. I hope you enjoyed this edition of Playing With Pooks. And uh, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. Teams are waiting though, Ozzy, just lurking nearby. The oh. pull up with the harpoon, oh, get up gosh. here, get the safety. He just got pulled I mean, in, it... Sprite's gonna sneak up. Oh, oh my so god, Sprite might just do this, he caught one. This actually Wait a second. Sprite does this. How slow? He might get the clutch. I was missing full health on low ground. Sprite, there is no way you are doing this. Sprite is on the high ground. Calc is trying to fight him. Sprite oh my has god. Potentially. Oh my gosh. This no could way. Be the clutch of his career. Sprite is on the high ground. What can he do to take this? He has just taken a 1v3 against the high ground team. He is a solo no right now. Way. He has every advantage. He has the builds. He has the health. Oh my Sprite god. Has done it. Game. Wait, what did he get for? No. Oh, 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 three, two, one, no! <laughs> <laughs>
love this. The style is so cool and it really shows that a lot of work went into designing it. High fives all around. Moving on though, we have another karma check from Here for the Lulz. I don't know if any of you remember the playing with Pook segment where I went up against that annoying player in the final circle who had the shockwave bow. He was just raining the shockwave bows down on me, trying to get me out of the circle. I have to be honest, I laughed a little bit too hard at this last clip. But next up, Lock FNBR gets a surprise while playing the Impossible Escape LTM. Mm. Seems pretty impossible to me. Guess it's just living up to its name. I mean, I like his reaction though, turning around and blindly shooting before they drop in from above. 10 out of 10. Finally, Soggy Healer 68 provides the clip that has absolutely everything. For those of you with no attention span, or maybe you just blinked, here's the TLDR version. Yes, 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 no. Anyway, moving on, we have issue number three of the Batman Cross Zero Point comic in Point of Interest. issue of the Fortnite Batman Zero Point crossover is out, and we're quickly getting closer to finding out the secrets of the Fortnite universe. We're covering the storyline and hidden secrets of each issue in separate episodes, so be sure to check out our previous ones if you haven't already. Now here's the strange part about the third issue. It's narrated from the point of view of someone outside of the loop. Right from the get-go, we see the narrator, most likely someone from the IO, mention how they're worried about Batman. The Dark Knight is in the middle of a battle royale match, fighting off foes and trying to survive till the end, unaware that he is being watched. Another thing to note is that this isn't being narrated to us, but is being sent as a message to someone else outside the loop. The note is addressed to PSYOPS, which stands for Psychological Operations, possibly another department within the IO. The narrator recollects everything Batman has been going through, how he loses his memory through his iterations, how his emotions aren't affected, and how he has been writing notes on his armor to keep track of facts that will help him escape the loop. The narrator needs help from the PSYOPS department and wants them to adjust the settings and foil Batman's plan and slow him down. In addition to that, it is revealed that his organization has an agenda for him. They don't seem to be afraid of him escaping the loop, they just don't want him escaping it that quickly. It's scary to think that someone's waiting for him outside of the loop and manipulating his actions because until now, our assumption was that him escaping would mean victory. As we saw Batman figuring out the storm sequences in the previous issue, in this one we see him taking advantage of them and constantly staying at the center of the storm as it improves his chances of winning and hence escaping the loop. The next message is sent by Loop Observations to Acquisitions, thanking them for their assistance. This organization has been throwing obstacles at Batman and he has overcome every single one of them. The writer of this message is happy with the progress and mentions how they are getting exactly what they needed. Next, we see Batman fighting Snake Eyes, who seems to be a tough match for him. They battle in each match and forget about each other every single time when the loop resets. For context, Snake Eyes is a mute character from G.I. Joe. Their fights are so intense that those outside of the loop find them entertaining. Even those inside the loop stop to watch them fight. I bet they're just waiting to third party whoever wins. Here we also see what looks like silhouettes of Deadpool and what we think is Samus Aran from the Metroid series. In the Apple vs Epic trial, it was revealed that Samus was intended to be a planned skin representing Nintendo. We might just get the skin in Season 7, hopefully in the Battle Pass itself, as its futuristic theme matches the intergalactic teasers we've seen for the season thus far. The next message is 
from loop observation to psyops, asking if respect can be considered to be an emotion. Batman has always been known to be an honorable character, refusing to use guns and even kill the worst of Gotham's criminals. As Snake Eyes and Batman battle each other in repeated iterations of the loop, there comes a point where Snake Eyes is about to lose his foothold and fall to his death, right when Batman extends a helping hand and pulls him back up. At this instance, the person watching them from the loop gets frustrated and types this on their keyboard, revealing that these aren't just messages, but an actual live chat between the observers. From that message, I feel like these guys are working from home and one of their kids is typing stuff in chat. Next, we see Dr. Sloan come in chat and reply Monka S to the sender. Just kidding. We see the writer of the spam message delete it as Batman saves Snake Eyes. They start communicating in sign language as Snake Eyes can't talk, and while we don't know what it is they say, readers of the comic have decoded it to be Batman telling Snake Eyes that only one of them can win and escape the loop. Batman finally gets his number one victory royale. Number one victory royale, yeah, for but wait, instead of peacefully meeting Catwoman like he was supposed to, he finds her being held hostage by Deathstroke. This is just unfair. The first time I won, I got a cool new victory umbrella. But I guess when you're a superhero, you can't expect anything to be normal. That's all for this issue, and we'll see you next week with a look into the much-awaited fourth issue, which according to Donald Mustard, is the one that reveals the biggest secrets of this mysterious loop and how it ties in with the world of Fortnite. Is anyone else finding it as difficult as I am to get a hold of these comics? If you've got a hookup, let me know where I can get my hands on these babies, please and thank you. That about does it for me, but for more of our content, check out our YouTube and Twitter channels at Squad State. Thank you so much for watching, and now here is your Victory Royale with Cheese.